Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. You got Stacy with me. Shalom. And we're talking about the length of the purification process. Okay. You know what purification process I'm talking about, Stacy? Yeah, I think I do. You want to briefly talk about this so-called purification process? Well, um, we know that purifying, when that happens, there is a cleaning process that takes place. So I believe that you are talking about how we were cleansed of some of the things that we were um, had going on in our lives and um, the time that it took to do this. Yeah, we um, learned about the angel of repentance. We're going to touch on that a little bit over in the Shepherd of Hermes and how he actually helps purify us before or after we um, come in contact with the so-called angel of punishment. This is all part of the um, purification of the children of Israel. He says here in Malachi chapter 3 that he's actually going to start with the Levites or the sons of Levi. But then he's actually going to um, purify everybody because when we get over to the kingdom of heaven, everybody will be purified. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Everybody will be like gold and silver. Well, in this class, we want to talk about the length of this period, the timing of this period, um, even a pattern that seems to be emerging around this period of punishment using our own personal testimony and, of course, a lot of scriptures. We're going to look to see if this is a pattern that anybody who expects to turn to the Father and put their trust and hope in Him can expect to go through. Right. Mm-hmm. So for anybody who's been on this journey for a while, this video will help explain some of the things that they've gone through. Yeah, sometimes we hear um, people ask questions as to why this is happening to me, how long will it take, is this happening to everybody who's on this path, and I think we're going to discover some um, that we all have some of the same questions but there's only um a few answers and they're written in the scripture for why we're going through these things yeah and it makes it more difficult when you don't know why you're going through it and you don't see anybody else going through it it kind of makes it seems like it's a personal thing right and if we notice that there's a light at the end of the tunnel then it does help you to maneuver through the path a lot easier and um when you know that you're going to get to that um, that final light. Yeah, yeah. And, and like you say, good to know that there is a light out there because some of these punishments can be a little bit severe. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're going to be telling people what to expect, those who are just now getting on this journey. Right. Um, what we're going to find out is that this year, 2021, maybe 2022, um, there will be a lot of people who will be starting this journey, like a lot of people did about seven years ago. Right. And in talking about all of these kind of events, we're actually going to touch on a few end time events. Maybe these pattern that seems to be emerging has something to do or is related to the end time events that we hear about in the scripture, like the Great Awakening or the uh, Hour of the Conscious or some people call it a rapture, stuff like that. Okay. Well, let's jump into the scripture. Now, we're looking here at Malachi chapter 3, which we've talked about. The book of Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament, and it's a great summary of our Father's plan, past, present, and future. Um, maybe even more so in the future because he tells us, you know, how we will get these certain protections through the tribulation and the so-called apocalypse and such. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we learn in chapter 3 is that when he starts the purification process of his people, when he starts to bring them back, he starts kind of with the Levites. All right. Um, but like we mentioned earlier, it's probably everybody's going to go through this, but we're all going to be cleaned up um, and made pure again, like gold and silver. Mm -hmm. Now, the next verse that I want to talk about comes out of the Third Testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, there are links to this book down in the description. There's a free PDF you can download. There's some audio books. You can listen to the audio book of the Third Testament. There's even a way to order a hardcover copy of the Third Testament. Just look down in the description of the um, video. But I was listening to this the other day, and a particular verse jumped out at me. You know how you can listen to the scripture over and over and hear something new? Yep, every time, seems as if. 
Well, this one right here jumped out at me down here in uh, verse 106. We may have to go back up there and look at uh, a couple other verses. But if you would, Stacy, read verse 106. This is coming out of uh, chapter 61, which is exhortation and warnings from the Lord. Um, Third Testament, chapter 61, read verse 106. It is true that there will be a good time to save yourself and scale the heights. But woe to he who delays that day. Woe to he who misses the opportunities to achieve the evolution of the spirit because he dedicated himself to the superfluous of this world. He does not know how long it will be until the next opportunity, nor how bitter will be the restitution. Now, this right here jumped out at me. This right is talking about this next opportunity. Mm. Because, okay, so this sounds like something you may hear um, down at the recruiter's office or down at the at the sports club where you have to wait until a particular season in order to join that group. Right. Mm -hmm. That Doesn't it sound like that to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the next opportunity, this makes it sound like to me like we can't just get on this path that's being described here anytime we want. We kind of have to wait on him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you getting that out of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it talks about how. There would be a good time to save yourself and scale the heights, talking about spiritual evolution. But it says, woe unto he who misses that opportunity to achieve the evolution. And then it goes on to say, because he doesn't know when he will get the next opportunity to get on the right path. Yeah, it's saying that, uh, it seems to be saying that we have the opportunity now, but if we dedicate ourselves to the things of this world, then we might lose that opportunity and then you might not know when your next opportunity will come along. Well, let's look at another verse here. This one is coming out of chapter 42, which is called Guilt and Penitence, Trials and Suffering. Um, let's jump down to verse 28. Okay. He who says that the paths of the Lord are filled with thorns does not know what he says. Because I have not created pain for any of my children, but those who have withdrawn from the path of light and peace, once they return to it, must suffer the consequences of their faults. Now, this one, too, actually surprised me a little bit, especially when the father brought to my attention that other verse that was talking about the opportunity. This one here seems to indicate that some of these trials that we refer to start the day you actually decide to return to the law. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a very interesting uh, thought for me because it seems to be saying that once we decide that we are going to return to the law, we're going to become obedient to the law. Once mm -hmm. that's decided, whether we do or the Elohim do or whoever, of course, we can't take credit for our righteousness or whatever. But once we decide that we are going to return to that righteousness, then these tribulations start. Yeah, it says once they return to it, they must suffer the consequences of their faults. So now looking at our own testimony here. Okay. Um, when we decided to return to the law in what, 2015, 2014, 2015, almost exactly seven years ago, at the time, we were living according to the Babylonian lifestyle, and we were doing pretty good as far as the worldly standards go. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were um, we had big houses, we had you know lots of property and cars and material possessions, as well as a lot of income. Mm -hmm. But looking back, we can say that when we returned to the law, then we started encountering these so-called thorns. Yeah, things that we never um, went through or things that we could have never imagined that would happen to us um, all of a sudden started to, to come into fruition. Yeah, I mean, these kids never really experienced hunger or anything before, never had to do without all of a sudden were, like we said, involved in these thorns. You know what the thorns are? You mean from the book of Hermes? Yeah, let's jump over there and look at that right quick. Yeah, we read about these thorns over in the third book of the Shepherd of Hermits called Similitudes. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to draw you guys' attention to the playlist that we did on this Shepherd of Hermits. Right. Um, this is the focus of our channel. You hear us talking about Hermits Academy. 
It's because the Lord put it on our heart back in 2017 to teach the book of the Shepherd of Hermits. And we've been trying to do so ever since. Mm -hmm. We've actually completed a verse by verse study of the entire book, right? Yeah. Um, it took us over 40 videos, but we actually covered every verse, every jot and every tittle um, with some sort of commentary from the entire book called The Shepherd of Hermits, right? Yeah, it's a very, um, very good listen to. You don't necessarily have to. Um, and I think that's one of the great things about this channel is that you can listen to it while you um, do the things that you, you know, do in your daily life. Yeah, it doesn't really have to take away from your busy schedule. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys check out that playlist. It starts off with the book itself, which you can listen to in about four hours. And then it gets into, like we said, the verse by verse study that Stacy and I did. Um, thanks to the help of our father giving him all praise and honor for that series we were able to complete. But I want to bring you over to similitudes as he starts to describe to us what the thorns are. We hear about thorns in the Bible all the time. Um, the, of course, this is a key. So we come down here to about verse 187 out of similitudes. I believe this is similitude 9 where it's talking about the mountains and we hear about the thorns and it says that the thorns are business affairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the, the briars or the thistles or the brambles as it's called here would be the riches of this world. Mm -hmm. So is that putting together? Well, going back um, where we talked about earlier, how we get caught up in the things of this world and, um, once we, um, come back over to doing it, doing the law, then we have to go through these thorns and yeah, things like that. Yeah, we'll go through these thorns. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people out there, um, in the comment section of these videos, a lot of people have been sending me emails telling me about things that they are experiencing. And, you know, that's one of the things that prompted me to do this video was that, you know, it feels like I went through the same thing these people are going through back there in 2014. Well, one of the things that I think we, um, as a homestead, are well aware of are thorns and just taking the the actual uh, plants. You know, we deal with Similac, we deal with Greenbrier, we deal with even the thorn trees, thorns that are on our orange trees and things like that. And thorns hurt. They yeah. hurt immediately and then they start hurting for a long time afterwards yeah. what, what it boils down to is the inability to pay for things that you need or you know getting tangled like you said earlier getting tangled up in these business affairs mm -hmm. um that doesn't really go in your favor you, know, right. you got people not answering the phone or anything because their bill collectors calling that's that's thistles mm -hmm. that's, thorn, that's thorns and thistles right right and while we're here in similar to six uh, we can actually talk about the angel of punishment and or the angel of repentance because when you're dealing with those guys, you're dealing with thorns and thistles. Well, let me ask you a question. Why does he call the angel of punishment a righteous angel? Because he's doing a righteous act. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, butt whoopings are a righteous thing. What does the yeah. Bible say? Swore to... Spare the rod, spoil the child. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we don't go through these necessary corrections, you can imagine how bad humanity will be. Yeah, it seems that we as a people, as humanity in a whole, when we're not going through anything, when we're not getting that butt whooping, then we our relationship with the Father is distant. And it's sometimes we can even say that we don't even have one. Yeah, well, the pain brings us closer to Him. Yeah. That pain is necessary to bring us to Him. Or well, like you said, we, we wouldn't go back. Right. Yeah. But over here in this chapter, he's talking about the angel of punishment. Um, like you said, he's a righteous angel whose responsibility it is to put these thorns and these thistles on these people for their restitution, mm -hmm. purifying them. Mm -hmm. You know, we did a whole class on this called Purified by Pain, very mm -hmm. popular video, um, because everybody seems to be going through this kind of stuff. There's other things involved too, but the most common one is these thorns and these thistles here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, one. Of, I think one of the ways is that we can do charity, um, but... The one who's that for me, I don't know about anybody else, that seems to work and do the trick is 
the one where I have to go through the thorns and the brambles and the briars and the thistles and stuff. Yeah. So I'm looking at my own life. I'm looking at our personal testimony and I'm starting to see some type of pattern emerge here. Back in 2014, we were in corporate America making $144,000 a year. And it was the next Passover that we actually had the communion wine for the very first time, 2000, Passover 2015. But that was the year when we discovered the law, yes, mm -hmm. the book of the covenant. And then it was after that, that we started to experience these thorns and these thistles. It's like once you made the commitment or you got the knowledge of the law, um, just as we were just reading, um, now you had to start going through these things, these thorns and thistles. Well, um, not only that was in the year 2014, we had a windfall. So you have to remember that the sabbatical year started in 2015. So just like the scripture says, we should have expected some type of uh, bountiful harvest in 2014, which would have been year six. Mm -hmm. And we got it. You know, we liquidated all of that property, um, sold all of the houses, you know, cashed in on the retirement, you know, as we was making that transition in 2014. But because we didn't understand the sabbatical year and how it was supposed to work and how we were supposed to live off of that for the next three years. Once that money ran out, we were definitely in the thorns and the thistles. <laughs> yeah. You know, so one could argue that our father was doing exactly what he was supposed to be doing, but it was because of our ignorance. We messed that harvest up. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, he gave us what he promised that. Well, what happened was definitely what was promised in scripture that would happen. We just we I got guess, the three not, years yeah. of we got the three years of harvest. Mm -hmm. We got it. We actually came in the form of money for us at the time. We got enough money in 2014 to live for three years, but we didn't recognize that that's what we were supposed to be doing. So we spent it. Yeah. So, you know, that also goes to say that just because we don't have the knowledge of what's about to happen does not mean that, you know, you know, God did us wrong or he's going to wait for us to catch up. He can't wait for us to catch up. You know, scripture still has to be fulfilled. Right. So we're looking at this pattern here with 2014 being a key year. That was the first year that we actually celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles in a tent. Yes. Mm hmm. And what I'm proposing here is this actually was one of those opportunities that we read about over there in the third testament of the Bible. I'm thinking that this started this seven year cycle, this seven year punishment period. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not only for myself, but for many people around the world that's on the same path. I think 2014, 2015 was a key year. Mm hmm. And 2015 actually being more important because that was the first year that we did Passover with the communion wine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that being the first festival was really kind of like the start. When we look back, you know, we didn't really experience uh, many thorns or thistles during Passover of 2015. You remember we went out and bought a lot of wine for the church and made a lot of donations and stuff around that time in 2015. Mm -hmm. But it was shortly after that that we really got into the hard times as far as financial troubles. All this to say that this so-called opportunity, I believe, was somewhere around 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. Well, let me bring you back over to Leviticus chapter 26 that talks about these curses. It talks about blessings, too. But down in about verse 14, we start to hear about these curses. It says if we don't hearken and do all of the commandments or something like that. And he starts telling us what will happen to us. Right. Matter of fact, read verse 15. And if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant. Now, this ain't what was going on in 2014 and 15. Right. This is actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we was actually discovering the commandments and discovering the judgments and running as fast as we could towards the statutes. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, when you come back over to the shepherd of Hermas and you're looking at his 
communication with the angel of punishment, he's asking the angel, angel of punishment, how long are these people punished that does these things? Right. Matter of fact, read verse 28. I said unto him, sir, I entreat you still to show me now one thing. What said he doeth thou ask? I said unto him, are they who depart from the fear of God tormented for the same time that they enjoy the false delight and pleasures? He answered me, they are tormented for the same time. That would mean that if you were in a year of delight, then you would have to spend a year in punishment. Right. So when we're looking back at our own personal testimony, if the punishments period started in 2014, 2015, that would be about seven years that we've been in this purification process. Right. Well, watch what happens when we go backwards. Started with 2015 being the first year, starting the seven year process all over again. That would mean that the previous seven year cycle started in 2008. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the significance of 2008 as far as we're concerned, 2007 and 2008? Um, you have to refresh my memory. As to well, you have to remember that this was the time when we were actually transitioning over into corporate America. This is when the time when we went from being in engineering school to actually working in a, for TVA in the nuclear power industry. Well, it was in about 2007 that you remember I was having this so-called reoccurring dream. Right, about your boss. My first reoccurring dream um, ever in my life, um, I kept having this dream that I had forgotten to do what my boss had told me to do. My boss had t asked me to do something, and I had completely forgotten what it was, and this dream just kept occurring. Yeah, so, I remember you said that you actually went to your, um, your boss person. Mm -hmm. And asked him, had he given you an, I guess, order or directive that you had not, um, have not. Completed? Yeah, after this dream had occurred so many times, I actually went down to the, my TVA boss, my human boss. And I, and I said, um, is there something? I even told him about the dream. And I said, you know, is there something that I'm not doing? And he said, no, you, you're doing everything. You're perfect at all of this. You know, there's nothing. But what had happened was, is I confused my bosses. I didn't know who my boss was at that point. Right. I mean, up until 2006, we had been on a trajectory of living according to the scripture and trying to obey the commandments as we understood it. And I probably made some deals and stuff with our father helping me get out of engineering school in the first place. But here that I was down at the job site, I guess I forgot who my real boss was. And after that, we started doing stuff that, you know, one could say was actually in breaking of the commandments. Yeah, we were what you, I guess you would just call good people. Yeah, you were good people. You know, we ain't, you know, stealing or hitting nobody in the head or nothing like that. But in 2017, I actually started this YouTube channel, uh, filming rabbits, growing right. rabbits, mm -hmm. you know. So we were actually breaking the second commandment even on this channel back there in 2007. Filming and eating. Filming in the air as an unclean animal, so, and we went on to have Christmas trees and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Whereas before we entered this industry, we never really tried to afford Christmas trees and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I remember in 2007, I went out and bought one of the biggest Christmas trees that would fit in our house. It was nice now. You remember those guys that have the <laughs> Christmas tree that's too tall and it, and it won't really fit in the house? Nah, I didn't make that rookie mistake. I actually measured and got the biggest one that would actually fit. And yeah. brought my family down there and took pictures of them hanging ornaments on this Christmas tree. We were wilding out. <laughs> we were, and I believe that so-called wilding <laughs> out started this seven years of us, you know, this, this seven years where we were with the so-called angel of pleasure. You remember that guy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe we were introduced to the angel of pleasure in 2006 or 2007 and we lived that pleasurable life for about seven years until 2014 when we discovered the law and now we have to deal with the angel of punishment. Yeah. Yeah. We were very well acquainted with what we now know as the angel of pleasure. Yeah. We didn't know it then. Um, but yeah. I think this similar pattern is what many of us are going through. 
I don't know if it's exactly seven years. It seems to be seven years. Like it's, we're on some type of seven year cycle here. But I'm sure somebody will come up with other dates that their punishment started like 2017 or, you know, 2019 and such. So what you're hearing from is um, brothers and sisters who are um, who are emailing you or just telling you about how everything was, quote, going. Everything was going great. Then all of a sudden this happened. Mm -hmm. They sat down, learned the law, read the law. Somebody mentioned the law. And they start, you know, studying about it. And now all of a sudden, it's just gone. Too. Now your job is gone. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the, all the first seem like the first thing you do is you lose your job. That's the thorns and the thistles. No, your family goes against you. Yeah, really? your family goes first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it right. happens so quick for us. That, yeah. you know. Well, let me show you one more interesting thing over here. This is coming out of chapter fifty-five of the Third Testament. Okay. We did a playlist on this one. You remember that? Um, the this purification of the world and humanity and judgment. Yeah, this is where we talked about all the earthquakes and famines. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's some people that say that we actually talked about the pandemic when we did that class. Okay. Even though it was back in about 2018. But, you know, it wasn't us making predictions. It's the scripture that talks about, you know, these strange elements just coming and stuff. Right. Again, you guys check the description. But you see down here in verse 7 of chapter 55, if you would, go ahead and read that. When those chosen by me find themselves reunited around my law, the earth and the stars will be shaken and in the sky there will be signs because at that instant, the voice of the divine spirit surrounded by the spirits of the just of the prophets and the martyrs will judge the spiritual and material realms. Now, I know I'm messing this up. I have to do this class all over again. But if we're understanding, if what we're saying here is right, about this seven year pattern and everybody kind of being on this pattern together, we all could be actually reunited around this law sometime around 2021, 2022. So you think that everybody is following the same pattern at the same time? All of the father's people, I believe, I believe is actually somehow centered around the sabbatical year. Okay. We know the sabbatical year starts in the fall of 2022. Mm hmm. Similar to that it would have started in the fall of 2015. Right. I believe that our father, and of course you know that the sabbatical year has something to do with the forgiveness of debts and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's why a lot of people are losing their jobs and having to make a lot of these fan, uh, financial transitions, even going through these, um, getting these windfalls and, and all of this other stuff that's going on, I believe is according to this pattern here. And I believe that the main cycle may have been 2015, this last ditch effort to regather his people around the law before we get to this so-called 120th Jubilee, which starts in the fall of the year 2023. Okay. You know, like you said, pray that your flight is not in the wintertime. Right. You know, so I believe that he has gathered his people. He has gathered his people because, you know, the, the scripture said he would gather them to the feast of Passover. So he has gathered his people over the course of these seven years, if I'm correct. He's gathered his people over the course of these seven years. And like we're reading over here in the Third Testament, now we can expect these fireworks to start here sometime soon. Hmm. That could be what our government is preparing for. Everybody's gearing up for, you know, we got this um, January the 13th, 2022 deadline that we read about over there in Daniel. All kinds of stuff. Like we mentioned, the sabbatical year, the jubilee year. This seems to be some type of pattern where our father is lining his people up, getting them prepared. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so as we go through all of this stuff that we've been through, financial hardships and, you know, family, you know. Uh, turning on us and all of that. It's all part of his plan. So do the people just um, start like trying to make different decisions? Do you just go with the flow uh, because it is a pattern? Um, what do you what do you do? Well, you first of all, stay prayed up. You know, we, we got to learn to pray more and ask for his will more. Father will allow us to make mistakes. He will allow us to do things on our own. Unless we pray for his will specifically, only when we do that can we expect him to come in and actually lead and guide us. So before we make any type of decision, you know, like us, you know, just to, just to bring this up. Um, and when, when we discovered, when I 
this was let know when that when I got my notice that you know I was going to be part of the reduction in force from my company you know 10,000 people were about to be let go or whatever one of the first things that the father led me to do was to actually go out and take our home equity loan out mm -hmm. and we used that home equity loan to purchase this property here so I believe but I do remember when I first got the notice, even before I let you know, I remember praying for his will and his guidance. And I believe he actually guided us to actually end up with the Hillbilly Homestead. So now we're better off than where we were. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know, we were a quarter million dollars in debt back there at the time. And, you know, things are different now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's because we prayed for his will. And I believe that's the number one thing to do. And the other thing to do is kind of like you said, once you've prayed for his will, you kind of just roll with the flow. You don't try to force decisions and do stuff. You kind of wait for him to help you with the decisions. And the thing about it, he puts the stuff right in your, in your, in your way. Yeah. He doesn't make it, you know, where you have to figure it out. He actually lays it out for you. We just have to have our patience in order to wait for his answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're getting ready for the next purification process then. Yeah. This next one might be pretty rough since it takes us from 2022 all the way through through 2028. Yeah, from everything that I'm um, seeing and, you know, that is very limited, I'm sure. Um, this one will be, um, well, I think it has to, you know. You don't necessarily get purified if the things that you're going through are lighter than the things that you're coming out of. So yeah. you're going to have to keep, it's going to have to continue to get hotter and hotter and hotter in order for um, the purification to happen. So, yeah, I believe so that this one might be a little, little rough. Yeah, and plus it includes years like 2024. Remember, that's the, the completion of the so-called X Across America. It's also the 120th Jubilee. And we're expecting a lot of things to go on in this 120th Jubilee. Well, that starts in the fall of 2023 and ends in the fall of 2024. And then you also have in, the, in here, you have the year 2027, which is the end of the times, time, and half a time prophecy of Daniel talking about the Antichrist and their reign. Mm -hmm. Their reign is supposed to end in about 2027. And then you have the return of Christ, who's expected 2,000 years after he went up. They expected him to come back down. That's about 2028. So <laughs> we, better, we better hope that our purification process is complete. Else we can get enough restitution to last for eternity. Or else death comes quick. <laughs> Oh, well, that might be what he's talking about when he said people, you know, oh he said goodness. the living will envy the dead. Yeah, right. this, mm. if you are starting your purification process now, you better get ready. Mm. I just hope ours is over. <laughs> I hope so too. I don't know. Oh my goodness, you know you'll make it, you know. I guess, but yeah, I think it's about to get rough. Well, the thing about it is we stick to the scripture, even though we're in purification, I believe the, the, the biggest part of the purification is because we're outside of the law and the faster mm -hmm. we get into the law, the less trouble it'll be for us. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause if we're still taking pictures and, uh, still participating in our uh, pagan holidays, it's going to be rough. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Know, because uh, you have you have no foundation. You have no substance. So mm -hmm. how can you go? You know, the father tells you he hate these things. Uh -huh. And we know, you know, and I think you taught me this, you know, you can. And let's just use this for an example. You can stack up all the food that you want to. You can make all these preparations that you want. But still, you have to have the father. So I'm saying that. If you don't have him to help you, if he's hating you, then how can you expect to make it through this? Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. Yeah, and it's what it boils down to is that when we participate in these pagan festivals, we are actually inviting demons around us. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, they don't tell us that part. When, you know, they just tell us it's about going shopping and buying gifts. They don't tell us that these gifts and these dinners come with demons attached to them. Mm 
So like you said, you have, you're not grounded, you have no foundation, and you have no weapons against these demons that you have now invited into your house, and they're going to just wreak havoc. Yeah, but you're still calling on the Father to help you. Yeah. And He will. He helps the just and the unjust. And He loves all of us. And He He is going to save all of us. But, you know, He'll well, allow, like you said, He'll allow punishment and damnation to come on you. Yeah, He will. Um, Make you wish you were dead. Well, because He wants us to be, He knows that's necessary for our purification. You know, just like your... Just like, you know, my grandchild, I will let him fall just so he learned to stop doing that. You know, stop climbing on that thing. I'll let him hit the ground, you know, pick him up and dust him off. But, you know, you have you can't just keep catching the kid every time he gets on a table and jumps off into the hardwood floor and you're going to catch him before you. You, you eventually got to let him fill that floor so he stops jumping off the table. Yeah, I remember his mom said he'll stop when it hurt hard enough. That's yeah, right. So. That comes for all of us, you know. We'll stop when it. So he actually has to allow the pain to come up on us so that we will stop. If he keeps interfering with our pain, then we're never going to stop. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so it's actually a righteous thing that he's doing for us, but it is very painful. So now you now you answered your own question. You know, why do you call the angel of punishment a righteous angel? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, punishment is necessary. All right, with that, we're going to go ahead and close this video out. If you got anything out of it, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Mm -hmm. And let us know what patterns you guys are seeing. What are you seeing that's happening uh, in previous times, and now you're seeing that it's repeating itself over again? Yeah. It'll be well, interesting to see what you We need to be collaborative on this. You know, none of us are really expected to go through this all alone, but we are at a distance and, you know, we have to do a little bit of extra effort to communicate these things, uh, testimonies for each other. But we can't edify each other if we, you know, say what's going on in our personal life. So let's talk about it down in the comment section. Let's see if we can, you know, hammer this pattern out, see if we can make it make it more sense. Like I said, I'll probably end up doing another video on the subject as we get more clarity on it. But, you know, what do you guys think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with that, we will see you guys in the next video. And Shalom. Shalom.